Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with a chat about authenticity, the various kinds of authenticity that we encounter in our peregrinations through the universe of classical music. And I thought of this um, in contemplating uh, the passing of my my really good friend, although we never met, but we had an enormous correspondence and lots of conversations, uh, Philip Gossett, the great scholar of Italian opera, who passed away in 2017. I was looking through one of his critical editions of you know Verdi, Verdi's Requiem, actually, and, and he did the most beautiful work creating critical editions of things. And he had a really, really sane observation about what a critical edition was and how it contributed to the authenticity or the period performance informativity of a performance of, a, of, a, of any interpretation. What he said is that a critical edition is a blueprint for an interpretation, but it's not the interpretation. It's not something that you follow with architectural fidelity. He said, what you need to do is give the performers, if they care, all of the information that's necessary about what the composer's original attention, intentions were and what versions and changes the composer actually sanctioned or were sanctioned in the composer's lifetime, and then turn the artists loose to create their own interpretations based on all of this material. But there's a lot of choice within the realm of the authentic performance material. That's what he always stressed. And, and I think we've forgotten that quite often these days, where there's this sort of battle between the period performance people in a whole raft of repertoire and traditional, normal orchestras that everybody, everybody engages in. And I want to talk about the two different kinds of authentic authenticity that they're selling, because I think a lot of listeners aren't really aware of what they are. They're aware of the period instrument version of authenticity because it's been very, very vigorously marketed. You know, the people who scream the loudest get the most attention, and they have screamed the loudest. They're extremely, we talked about classical music cults, how dogmatic and nasty they are quite often towards more standard approaches to the repertoire that they claim is proprietarily theirs. Of course, it isn't. It's nonsense. And you know the music always speaks to whoever it speaks to, and they play it with, if they play it with feeling, then it's just as authentic as somebody who does the period performance thing. But the 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 historically informed performance movement is based on this premise: that if you go back and look at the conditions that obtained at the period in question and try to replicate them as much as possible in as much as they concern music education and playing technique and instrumental construction, then you're going to get closer to what the composer must have intended. And you can't really argue with that because composers can only intend with, to hear what was there. That doesn't mean, that does, or what composers put up with. That doesn't mean that's what they ideally would have wanted. We know for a fact that 99.9% .9 of composers who worth their salt were incredibly dissatisfied with the existing conditions as regards performance, rehearsal, manufacture of instruments, performing techniques, artists, everything. Everything. That's why we things improved. That's why things changed, ultimately. So, so that kind of authenticity is extremely provisional um, because the sounds that actually get made are wholly conjectural. We have no idea if this is what anything really sounded like. We have no idea if the approach that these people take is the approach that musicians took then. There's been very, very good scholarship done, for example, on the issue of tempo that argues that Today's period instrument ensembles play everything far too quickly and that performers on actual original instruments would never have been able to perform at the speed um, that modern period instrument ensembles move at because the technique, the, uh, their technique is 
infinitely more refined and fabulous than those of typical performers back in the day. And the instruments themselves, the replicas that are built um, of those instruments are far higher quality than what most instruments would have had back in the day. And the non-existence of conductors and regularly constituted well-drilled ensembles and the metronome, for example, to set and fix a tempo would have made our entire modern conception of period authentic tempo completely invalid. And I believe that. I think the scholarship is very persuasive on that score. It really is. You can't really argue with it, especially when no one's heard the product. So that's, that's one kind of authenticity. I would call it conjectural authenticity because there's much more guesswork in it than there is reality. Then there's the other kind of authenticity, the kind that I want to talk about because I think it's, it's been largely overlooked. And I hear it quite often from friends of mine who are in orchestras and whatnot who talk to me about it, and that's this. The major orchestras or performers or ensembles of today have a provenance. That provenance is a tradition of performance, of playing, and of education from illustrious teacher to illustrious teacher going back several centuries. There are entire national schools of instrumental timbre and sonority and playing. There was a German school of violin playing. There was the Franco-Flemish school of violin playing. There is there is the Czech school of woodwind playing. There is the Dutch school of woodwind playing. There are schools of instrument manufacture. <clears throat> we know, I mean, the obvious ones, the Stradivariuses, the Guarneriuses, you know, the string plays, the string instruments, which have been altered, and bow manufacture, and all of this stuff, going back hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, and as often as not, where the period instrument movement was most effective and where it had the most to contribute, I would argue, is in earlier music. The earlier you go, the more useful they were. Why? Because those traditions, that provenance didn't exist until really the start of the 19th century with the foundation of the Paris Conservatoire, with you know, in the, about that period when all the great conservatories arose, which were, which were able to preserve and transmit local or national styles of performance. And those styles still exist. You know, the German style of violin playing, we have performers like Christian Tetzloff, Frank Peter Zimmermann, you know, they, they Thomas Zeitmeier, we have recordings by Wolfgang Schneiderhan. This is the German school, the school of Joachim, some might say. Some might say. Nowadays, we have performers who are like snake oil salesmen. They sell or purport to teach period instrument performance styles, which no one has ever heard, when those performance styles actually survive. They survived into modern time, I would say, far more completely than any speculative scholarship school of Joachim, and there is one in the UK, by the way. Um, there is, and it seems to me it's a lot like vocal instruction. You know, there is no school of music instruction which is more liable to to fraud and and hucksterism than being a voice teacher and teaching your method. Well, the period instrument people have their method. This method is supposedly supported by scholarship. Most, much of that scholarship is absolutely wretched. It involves taking a single text or a couple texts or treatises on something and generalizing it as universal practice for an entire period of human history. I mean, if they were historians, they would have been kicked out of the department without any thought for being completely and totally unhistorical. But this, this provenance tradition, the tradition that obtains in modern orchestras and with modern ensembles is a very significant one. There isn't a single school of playing from violin to flute to oboe to bassoon to French horn to trumpet to, that does not have that provenance that doesn't go back from student to teacher to teacher to teacher going back into what, the 19th century? And because... And because that tradition exists and major orchestras have all the most valuable and best quality instruments, 
I mean, let's not forget that. You have it, you have these these fabulous schools of instrumental manufacture who make gorgeous, marvelous, wonderful precision instruments or who use the old ones, the Stradivariuses and the Guarneriuses. You don't see period instrument people running around playing their Strad. No, they play a a a a Jaime Schmeckelberg violin made last week. And it may be a wonderful violin, it may not be, but it's a conjectural violin. It's based on plans as they existed hundreds of years ago and materials that are modern and craftsmanship and tooling that is modern. They are strange hybrids of, of things that never existed ever until today. They are modern hybrids, these old instrument things. And, you know, I remember very, very vividly, my, my conductor friend, Antonio Dalmeida, studied at Yale University under Hindemith. And Hindemith was um, a tough teacher. Hindemith believed, first of all, because he played every instrument known to man or learned to play one, that you should too. And he also was fascinated with early instruments. And of course, there was an early music collection at Yale University of the actual early instruments. You know, the the nose flutes and, and snoozophones and and ratchet tunes and all these things that these people played, sackbutts and cornets and all that. And he had his students actually play them. And the sounds that they made, even when restored or, you know, sort of done something to make them functioning were pretty alarming as often as not. Um, and, you know, again, it was it was another one of those 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 you know, proofs, if such were necessary, that what these people are doing in claiming this authenticity of performance is just a lot of, a lot of nonsense in terms of what things must have actually sounded like. But today's musicians, to stick with that little topic, that version of authenticity, the authenticity of having an unbroken performance history as an ensemble that goes back 150 years we tend to discount that. We just assume, you know, we've been told by the authenticity people that modern orchestras are modern, that they have existed like since yesterday, and that everything they do, they probably thought up the morning of the performance. Well, that is not true. It's not true at all. In fact, there isn't a single period instrument player out there who was not first trained as a modern instrumentalist according to a modern method, which is actually probably an authentic method, a traditional method, a method going back hundreds of years to various schools of playing in which their teachers were trained and the teachers before them were trained. And so, and so I really think that we are doing ourselves a disservice if we accept the idea that these, these period instrument ensembles, that their notion of authenticity, that their notion of, of scholarly or period rectitude is correct. We really don't know. We don't know. We know that it's correct as regards whatever sources they choose to use, possibly, possibly, assuming those sources were correct in codifying things that performers ever actually did. I mean, the reality is that performers, there's no evidence people ever used any of these treatises to do anything. Um, the, the real performers were taught by the person they were taught by, and then they went out and made a living. That's what they did. Uh, today, however, people are trained. And so I accept, you know, people have said to me that I fight against period instruments. I hate period instruments. It's all nonsense. I hate bad performances, and I hate ignorant performances. Anyone who knows my work knows that over the past four or five decades that I've been doing this, four decades, I have praised thousands of period instrument performances with great enthusiasm um, because I think they sound fascinating and they interest me. But I've also dogged a lot of them for their arrogance and for the presumption that what they're doing is somehow more authentic or has any kind of validity that's greater than what today's performers do. Ultimately, the validity of a performance is determined by the excellence of the performance on whatever instrument it's played on. And the intelligence and depth of interpretive genius shown by the performers, regardless of how they perform it, whether they're playing on a kazoo, it doesn't matter. But today's performers, today's great instrumentalists, the great orchestras and great ensembles represent an entirely valid 
notion of authenticity, authenticity of tradition, authenticity of performance practice, authenticity of expression. And that is traceable back through human beings all the way back to really the dawn of musical education to the beginning of the 19th century, largely. And that's pretty amazing because now what we're seeing is the authentic performance people moving forward later and later. Recently, I, I mean, just recently, I talked about a dreadful performance of saint Santon poems featuring, featuring François-Xavier Roth and Les Siècles, a period instrument band that does music that was written in the late 1800s and early 1900s. I mean, you, when you talk about that stuff, you're dealing with the modern tradition of performance that is passed down to players who still exist and whose teachers still existed and, and that survived to make stereo recordings that tell us just how wrongheaded what these people are doing really is. Because there is a tradition and there is an authenticity of performance and everybody knows what it is. So what are these, what are these schmoes doing saying that they're authentic for Ravel's pictures in an exhibition that was orchestrated in 1920-something or 1930-something, whatever it was, when the people who were playing, first of all, a lot of them were still alive making recordings in the 50s and 60s. Their teachers and their students were still alive and still are. So... What, what kind of garbage is this? You think that using a, a, a slightly different manufacturer of, of a trombone is going to make a difference? You know, all other factors of performance taken into consideration? Of course it's not. It's just an absurdity. It's an absurdity to even say so. And, and I have very little patience for that because when the two versions of authenticity overlap, the authenticity of scholarly speculation, which is the historically informed performance movement, and the authenticity of actual living performance tradition overlap. Which one would you choose? Which one do you think has more validity? Which one do you think is going to get closer to what the composer's intentions must ultimately have been? Well, I think the choice is clear. And I think we need to understand and we need to insist on and celebrate the authenticity, which is the modern performance tradition. Yes, it's modern. It's modern because it exists today. It isn't modern because it was invented today. It was invented hundreds of years ago. How is it that that the classical music world, that listeners, that everyone had been so foolish as to allow themselves to be sold this bill of goods that people who are engaging in nothing but a bunch of scholarly speculation based on fusty old texts are more authentic than the player whose teacher was taught by this person who was taught by this person who lived to know Beethoven. <laughs> I mean, it's just crazy. Absolutely crazy. And so what I am... I just want to conclude by asking all of us to keep in mind the historical reality, the fact that today's musicians are not strange new modern creatures. It's the historically informed performance movement, which is the strange new modern <laughs> modern thing. You know, it really, it really is. And it's the traditional musicians of today, the modern musicians of today, who really have the provenance the actual living tradition of performance of the music. So there you have it, my friends. Keep on listening, listening critically. And don't take all of the marketing and, 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 and boosterism and, and nonsense for what it you know, purports to be. You're smarter than that. And what's more, your ears hear the truth, always. Take care.